Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and there have been new details about the Xbox 720 release today. First off, before I usually dive into, you know, rumors and stuff like that, I give you guys some sort of level of accuracy, you know, like, <laughs> could this possibly be nonsense or is this going to be dead on? And uh, this could possibly be nonsense, you know, it, it's an anonymous source on the internet who seems to be well researched and knows what he's talking about. And he claims that he's legit. And, you know, if you can't believe what you read on the internet, then what is this world coming to? But, <laughs> um... Anyway, he seems to know what he's talking about, and I thought I'd tell you what he had to say, because I find it interesting. Here we go. First things first, he says that you don't need to be connected to the internet just to play single-player games, and that Microsoft was never considering such a thing. I don't know. It, it seems like I've heard a lot of places report that that was true, and there's patents, you know, where they applied for stuff that enforces that sort of thing. And, like, who was it, the creative director or something like that at Microsoft it came up with that specific deal with it quote? But this guy says it's not true. And he's you know has access to developer machines and stuff like that. So I, I can't tell you for sure, but um, hopefully he's right. And, and that whole thing about uh, you know, not being required to stay online just to play single-player games was false all along. But he's got a lot more interesting stuff he talks about, too. One of the details he's quote unquote leaking is that it runs Windows 8 RT. I think RT stands for runtime, and that basically means that like the core of the operating system is the same. Now there's a lot of services that'll run on your PC that probably won't be running on an Xbox, which is both good and bad. But you know what, I'll dive into that. It's good in that it takes less processing power to do the same thing. You know, you can have like a weaker CPU and a weaker GPU on an Xbox and still have gaming performance that's just as good because it's not running a million and one stupid services that might be useful on a general purpose machine like a PC, but not a dedicated gaming machine like an Xbox. So it's nice to have a trimmed down version. The downside is if you're writing games for it, then you need to know that you can't depend on those things being there. If you're writing any application for it, really, you need to know that it's not exactly Windows because it's missing some stuff. Missing some stuff is awesome when you're trying to run on weak hardware it sucks when you're trying to run everything under the sun that's what it means it also means that developers porting to the xbox will probably have an easier time than the ps4 because you know as much as the ps4 runs on similar hardware if it's a different operating system then they've got some work to do by making it cross-platform and porting it over if it's running on windows on both pc and xbox then you practically get two platforms for the price of one so uh you know if they run it on windows 8 that'll help them a lot and i think that the xbox 360 runs some old version of like windows nt or it's some basis of that so um so this isn't too outlandish anyway there's more stuff to talk about here we go oh big one backwards compatibility they're saying that it's going to ship with an xbox 360 system on a chip so yeah, here's what that means. They're going to have hardware that emulates an entire Xbox 360 on one little chip. You know, things have advanced a lot in the last, what, eight years or something like that. So they're able to take an entire Xbox 360 and reduce it to just, you know, one chip and include it in the Xbox 720. That'd be pretty cool news. I, I mean, backwards compatibility doesn't mean a ton to me because I don't tend to play games, you know, after you know several years have passed by. But you know, still, if I get it, if it's in there, <laughs> then then that's a really cool thing. And also, by having the Xbox 360 system on a chip, it is just more processing power that they can tap into. You know, they could use that chip to handle background processes while, you know, the main chip is handling, you know, cutting edge gaming type stuff. That it, it's, you know, it never hurts to have an extra processor in your system if you're trying to get stuff done. So I can, you know, you can imagine the one processor focusing on, like, for example, when I live stream on the PS3, the whole thing slows down because messages are just pouring into my PS3 and it causes me problems, especially if I'm hosting. If they had a system on the chip that could just handle background processes, which by the way, PS4 will have a system, a chip just for background processes. Um, but if you have that, then all of a sudden, you know, secondary functions don't have to bother you while you're doing your primary stuff. And uh, it's kind of nice that the Xbox 720 might bundle in something like that, not only for backwards compatibility, but also for multiprocessing. So that's good news. Um, more stuff, more stuff. The controller. All right. So this was interesting to me. They say the controller is pretty much the same 
except the directional pad's been improved. And um, you know, if you're using it, it, it'll only be noticeable while actually using it. It's going to look the same. Another thing they say is that the battery life has been improved by 16% by changing the way that it handles wireless. It doesn't give any details on that, and I'm, you know, it, whatever. It doesn't give any details on that. But I have some thoughts on it. If they've changed the way that wireless works on the controller, that might imply that the controllers are not backwards compatible, that you can't take your Xbox 360 controllers and put them on a 720. Um, again, this is a random dude on the internet, and you can't really you know, take that to the bank or anything. But, you know, it's a detail they threw out there. Uh, apparently, the wireless protocol has changed, and they're able to get 16% better battery life from it because of that. So, um... Uh, if the controller's changing, it's changing. I know on the PlayStation side, the controller's definitely changing. They've already showed pictures of it and stuff like that. On the um, Xbox side, you know, everyone's just been kind of wondering. You know, no one really knew what was going to happen. And this, according to anonymous guy on the internet, means that they're going to update the Xbox controllers to some extent. So, so that's out there. Next up, Connect 2.0. So um, a lot of my viewers tend to be pretty hardcore gamers. I mean, that's that's the crowd that watches YouTube videos, and they're not interested in the Connect that much. But to me, one of the big problems with the Connect 1.0 version was the controls were bad. I mean, the whole thing was just kind of like silly because of the lag. Because like it it might be interesting to me as a platform, Connect this is, if uh, if I felt like I could do stuff in it and you know what I was doing had a perfect impact on what's going on in the game right like if I lose in COD I might blame lag I might blame you know this or that but I rarely blame my controller not doing what I told it to do <laughs> but if I lose in connect then that's often the primary problem well they say connect 2.0 is going to be wildly different in that it, it, it's going to have you know great control and and there'll be no humanly detectable lag and stuff like that so uh um, so there's some good news in there. Maybe Connect games will start being more than just, you know, like charades. You know, like <laughs> as it is now, that that's kind of how I view Connect. You know, it, it's it's really just about having a good time. Most overpowered weapon in the game, right there, gondolas. <laughs> um, it, it it's really about having a good time, Connect, and not so much about um, the other stuff. By the way. I just figured out recently, maybe you've known this for ages, how to put away a sentry gun. If you have another kill streak, you know, directional pad down, call in that other kill streak, and it will put away your sentry gun. I used to feel completely committed to placing it, and now I realize, like, ah, oh, you know, especially if I, the stuff I've been running lately, like, I iron the lightning strike and sentry gun right next to each other, so you can put it away and not necessarily have to place it. If you if you just saw me do that and wonder how it happened, that's it. I switched the lightning strike and then I put the sentry gun away. So, uh, quick little tip there for you guys. The next thing up, mini Xbox or Xbox TV. So you guys may have heard about this that there's like a cheaper version of the Xbox that's going to exist that's not even a gaming machine. Like that's that's the objective behind it. And it's just a play for being that popular set-top box in your living room. And I think what they're saying is like Xbox is making a play for that HDMI port one, right? They want to be the the primary thing that you use to watch all your entertainment, whether that be movies, TV shows, you know, gaming, or whatever. They want to own your living room. Everyone's been trying to own your living room for ages, yet somehow, uh, you know, companies that you have barely heard of <laughs> still seem to be your primary set top box. They're looking to change that, and um, they're coming up with an Xbox Mini or Xbox TV. To, uh, to make a run at that. It's going to be pretty much an Xbox with weak processors that can only play movies and stuff. Um, it's not really the thing that I'm excited about, you know, coming my way, but just the same, uh, you know, whatever. You know, it'll be interesting. Maybe we don't necessarily have a full Xbox in every room and, and you drop like an Xbox mini somewhere else. Um, I bet it plugs and plays well with having other Xboxes in there and, and then the things just work well together. But uh, but that's coming and it's also going to run the Windows runtime and I think they're just taking a lot of the R&D that they put into the Xbox 720 and coming up with the cheaper version that's not aimed at just gamers. You know, kind of competes with what Microsoft is doing. So, uh, so that's going to come out and that'll be interesting. Uh, some other stuff, they said they pushed back. There were supposed to be like Xbox glasses that were coming out, kind of like a Google Glass competitor. And they say that uh, the stuff kind of works but isn't going to make it into prime time so um yeah take that as you will oh one last thing so 
60 bucks. They're saying it's only going to cost $60 to in licensing fees to get stuff on the Xbox, which is a really big deal. Um, previously, it cost like tens of thousands of dollars to get your game on the Xbox. And now they're saying, look, you can develop for a Windows machine, you know, this PC that's already sitting in your bedroom, and then you can pay $60 for a licensing fee and have the thing run on an Xbox. That'll be huge. It's nice for us because we get a wider variety of games, but both the Xbox and the PS... Um, the Xbox 720 and the PS4 are competing heavily, trying to get developers to, you know, to show them some love and, and port their release titles to them. And this, I think, is just, you know, another manifestation of that. They're trying to be the developer's favorite platform. And I think he gets saved by the bell right there. <laughs> so that's new. Uh -huh.